That looks an awful lot like a bottle of whiskey. Right next to it, that looks an awful lot like a box of cigars. Could only mean one thing. The long-awaited return of Leaf and Barrel. folks so like I said today we are back in the saddle with a first leaf and barrel in quite some time I know it's been a while since I've made one of these uh, you guys have uh, well been very vocal too about the fact that I haven't done one in a while <laughs> so vocal I think is the nicest way I could word that <laughs> today we're back in the saddle we're doing a leaf and barrel for the first time in a while and I'm pretty pumped about it. I think it's going to be good. If you guys aren't familiar with the series I do on my channel called Leaf and Barrel, it is where on the main channel, this channel you're watching right now, we do the barrel portion, which is a whiskey review, and we take a look at a particular whiskey. And then over on my second channel, we look at the leaf portion, which is the cigar part, and we pair a cigar with the whiskey, and we see how they kind of work together. For the barrel portion, we've got one that I have seen quite a bit of YouTube guys talking about lately. I've seen a lot of scuttlebutt about it, and when I saw this in a local store, I had to grab a bottle. And uh, I really, I haven't drank a ton of this stuff yet, but I've really been enjoying it. I think this is a really great bottle. Remus Repeal Reserve V. Round round by myself, mm. be fine by myself. Mm. I don't need no one help. Mm. I don't need no one else. Mm. Build it by myself. Mm. Bourbon from top shelf. Yeah. I don't even I don't know why. Yeah. Now I hope you guys know I take one for the team here because I never ever drink whiskey without a cigar. And for this series, I, I do first, before we get into the cigar portion, I do drink some of this. And man, it's hard for me to do. I, I just, I really, I think whiskey is one of those things best enjoyed with a cigar. That's my personal opinion. I've heard a lot of people give me grief and say that uh, having a cigar ruins your palate and it doesn't allow you to get some of the notes. That's how I always drink whiskey is with a cigar. So to me, I don't know, it always makes the whiskey better. Plus, I recently found out one of the top scotch guys on the planet. He's uh, kind of a world-renowned scotch taster and reviewer and all this, is a cigarette smoker. So, for all you guys that say you can't have a cigar, or if you're a cigar smoker, your palate's no good, or any of this stuff, go fuck it. <laughs> anyway. Today we're doing this Remus Repeal Reserve. Give you a couple stats on this bottle. Remus Repeal Reserve is named to commemorate the repeal of Prohibition in 1933. By the way, what the hell were we thinking about Prohibition? I mean, honestly, how would we ever think that no alcohol is a good idea? That's just, that's a horrible, horrible idea. Water of life. One of the darkest times in America's history. <laughs> I said one of. I know there's lots of other bad stuff in American history. I'm not, I'm just saying. Prohibition sucked. Glad I wasn't alive. <laughs> Prohibition. This stuff comes in at a very comfortable 100 proof or 50% ABV. This is MGP in here. Uh, this is 100% MGP whiskey. It's a little confusing because this is MGP whiskey. And as far as I know, this is bottled by MGP or for MGP. But then it says distilled by Remus Distilling Co. And then from the research I looked at, also owned by Luxco. So I'm a little confused about the relationship there between Luxco and Remus, Remus Distilling Co. and MGP. Gets a little confusing. Bottom of the line, all MGP juice in this whiskey. And some really nicely aged stuff at that. The oldest in here is from 2005. Uh, about 9% of it, which is a 16 year. Down to the youngest in here uh, is, uh, let's see, 54% is right at 13. Even at 13 being the youngest, this has got some pretty good age stuff in here. And honestly, for me, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of this while we're talking about it. For me, that is a really good age and it is a really good proof. I have said many times that I think about 105 proof to 110-ish is like perfect, right? It's that happy middle ground where it's got enough proof that it's got some kind of 
density to the flavor and it's got some punch and it lets you know it's there, but it's not crazy like some of the Stag Juniors and, and Stags that I've had, which don't get me wrong, they were delicious. But you know, when you get up there in like the high 120s in proof, I mean, that stuff could strip paint. So I mean, you know, so I feel like, you know, 105 or so is like a really nice middle ground, 110. Um, and this at 100 is just a little under that. Now some hundreds can be a little thin. For the most part, I think it's a pretty nice, enjoyable proof for whiskey. Oh God, yeah, this stuff, this stuff just smells just delicious. It's got a nice bit of that caramelly dark brown sugar you're most of the time you get in bourbon. You get a little bit of oak in there. You can taste a little or smell a little bit of that oak. A little bit of that age comes through. Anytime you got a whiskey sitting in a barrel for 15, 16 years, you're bound to have some oak. There's a little bit of like a dark fruit thing going on. I don't know if you'd call that a raisin or a fig or you get the vibe though, that, that dark kind of dried fruit situation. It's got a really nice nose. Maybe that's like a sweet oak I'm smelling. There's definitely a fruitiness in there too, like a raspberry or a, maybe a strawberry, like a red fruit. It's really nice. It smells glorious. Let me tell you that. Let's get a, let's get a sip before we go any further. Oh yeah, man, that stuff. Right now, MSRP on this stuff is about 90. I think I paid 100 from what I've heard different people when uh, my buddies, the bourbon junkies, I think they found it for around the hundred too. I think a lot of people are finding it for around that hundred dollar price point. Uh, anywhere in that 90 to hundred, this is a buy for me all day. This stuff is really, really, really good. For anything a hundred or less, I mean, it's just delicious. As soon as you get it in there. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. Good one. <laughs> you taste a nice caramelly, oaky. It's a nice sweet oak though. It's not overly tannic or bitter, uh, especially for having some 16 year old juice in there. 15, 16 is generally about as old as I like. Honestly, I've had some really old bourbons. Now when you get into scotches and stuff, that's a different wheelhouse altogether. I've had some ridiculously old scotches that were just beautiful. I mean, just delicious, but bourbons, I don't know, man. I've had some like older bourbons that they get a little barrel bitter. Uh, and I feel like 15 years is about that half happy point where you get a nice bit of the oak influence, but it hasn't gone overly oaky or bitter yet. It still has a nice sweet kind of uh, flavor to it. You get that dried fruit thing going on. The red uh, fruit kind of thing I smell to the nose. I'm not getting much of that on the palate, if any. It's definitely more of that dark dried fruit kind of situation. Raisins or plums or figs, that kind of vibe. A, a nice little bit of a honey sweetness. That could be like the oak, so it's kind of like a sweet oak uh, honey kind of flavor. Finishes, nice, caramel. There might be a little chocolate in there and a little bit of maybe pipe tobacco. Some of the notes in here kind of remind me a little bit of some of the notes I get in 1910. I get a little bit of that chocolate dried fruit and um, pipe tobacco kind of vibe in 1910. And this kind of reminds me of that, not, not to say this tastes like 1910, but some of the same notes that I get in 1910, uh, I'm getting in this. It's really good, the oak on the back, but it's a really good oak. It, it reminds me of, uh, recently, I don't know if you saw a post I did on Instagram, reminds me of the smell that you get in a Rick house with all of those old oak barrels. It's really, this stuff is really nice. It really, really is. And it, like I said, for like 90 bucks, I mean, come on, get the hell out of here. Nice and sweet up front. There's definitely some, some complexity going on in here. See right there, I got a little bit of like a nutty flavor, a walnut, maybe a pecan, but like the sugared, kind of like Bucky's. We've talked about Bucky's before, like the, the sugared, pecans and stuff they roast in Bucky's. They have almonds and pecans and cashews and all that, but it kind of reminds me of that. They roast them in these big pots with like butter and brown sugar, and I kind of get a little bit of that. This stuff is just, it's delicious, man. I, I cannot wait until the next video when I can light this thing up because great as some of the flavors in this already are by itself. When I start mixing it with this cigar we got over here, I think it is gonna be fantastic. This stuff is 9% 2005, 5% 2006, 19% 2006, 
13% 2008 and 54% 2008. So you've got one, two, three, four, five different bourbons making up this blend. Uh, most of them relatively high on the rye, thir between 36 and 21% and rye. So I think this stuff is delicious. I think at 100 proof, the density of flavor is fantastic. It is a nice little flavor roller coaster. Uh, some bourbons are kind of one dimensional. This has enough different things going on that I think it is an interesting for people that are a little more into whiskey and are looking to kind of do that thing where they pick out all the flavors and stuff. It's complex enough. It has enough going on in it for that, but it also is just sweet and, and nice enough that even people that, you know, aren't crazy into bourbon or are fairly beginners, I think could still really appreciate and enjoy this stuff. I think it's good. Uh, and I paid for this with my own money. This is not anything. They didn't send me this for free. It wasn't sponsored, nothing like that. Um, so, that's the, the just the, the straight dope on the bottle. I think it's really, really good. I've never had any of the other Remuses to compare it to, but I know this one's delicious and I'm kind of wishing I would have bought a second bottle. Right now, the availability on this should be pretty good. I usually don't like to do these leaf and barrels on stuff that's crazy, crazy hard to find. This stuff, they just did a full release on though, so you should be able to find it uh, locally, maybe. I mean, you know, with whiskeys, man, it's tough. It depends on your area. Some people, can't get stuff that I can walk into any liquor store and just easily find. And then there's other areas that they find stuff that I couldn't find to save my life. So, you know, whiskey is super regional and, and tough, but in general, they did do a full release on this. It isn't any crazy allocated or anything that I know of. So hopefully you guys can find this stuff and enjoy a little pour. Well, that is it for the overlook of the Remus Repill Reserve 5 or V, depending on how you wanna look at it. Next, can't talk about it too much because on the main channel, people get weird, YouTube gets weird. Hoping to maybe, I know I've said this a hundred times, but hoping to get a little better rhythm going with some of these leaf and barrels and I'm gonna try to do at least one a month. You know, I know you guys are like cussing at me right now. <laughs> I've said that before, but that is just so you know my intention. Now, whether or not that happens, I can't promise depending on schedule and, and all the other stuff that goes on, but my intention is to try to do at least one of these leaf and barrels a month. So we'll see. That's it for this one. If you're interested, click over to the next video, the leaf portion of this week's leaf and barrel. Check out this cigar we got going. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, feel free to smash that thumbs up button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. I hope everyone is having a fantastic week and we'll see you in the next video. Now that it's opened up a little bit, this stuff smells straight like caramel. Like I'm cooking caramel on the stove. Woo, sweet baby Jesus, that shit smells glorious.